Hi, this is Mike Queen from WinCNC, and today I want to talk to you about an application that we did to make posts and rails for fence out of rectangular vinyl tubing. The program is called WinFence, and here it is. Uh, when you first open it up, it's not set up correctly, so I've got to make a change here. No, that's not right. I've got to get it in the right folder. This is where the G-code files are going to be. This is where the job file is, which is telling it what to run. And this is where the controller is. So now it's pointing in the right place. And I'll tell you now that uh, with this application, you can make posts, rails, or you can do manual and make about anything you want to out of it. You can, with the posts and the rails, you can only use one size hole. But with the manual, you can use different size holes to create unique uh, posts or rails. But to get started, you've got to have material you've got to have holes and you've got to have bits so right now I don't have any so the first thing I need to do is to make a couple of of uh, post materials so I'll start it out with a length of 120 a width of say 5 inches and a height of 5 inches I want the wall thickness to be about 40 thousandths I want my cut rate to be about 400 inches per minute and my plunge rate to be about uh, we'll say 60 inches per minute. Now I've got to give it a name and the best way to name it is to name it after what size it is. So I'll say 120 by 5 by 5 and now click save and if I look here now I've got a material here. Might as well create another one while I'm here to show you how it would work. Let's say I had one that was uh, 110 inches and it was 4 by 4. 4 and 4 and we won't change anything else. We'll leave the rest of it the same. And I have to rename this. I'll go 110x4x4 and save. Now if I pull this down, you can see that I've got two different materials here that I can choose from. And I can create a list of these and select those from the tabs here, whichever tab I'm on. I also need holes. So to start out with, I'm going to make a hole that is three inches long, two inches wide and I'll give it a radius, a corner radius of 0.125 and I've got to name this one also so I'll say 3x2 x.125 and I'll just click save and now when I pull this down it's there I can also tell what size this hole is going to be by its name I want to do a second one here. I'll do a, a 3 by 3. Now I'll do 2.75 by 3. And I'll leave the radius at 125 because I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill for a, for a bit. So I'll do 2.75 x3 x. 0.125 and I'll click save and that's how it would make holes. Bits similar but I'm only going to use a quarter inch end mill ever so for me anyway 
0.25. I could create more if I wanted to do more, but I'm going to use a quarter inch. So I'll just give it a name of a quarter inch and I'll save. And you can see that it's there. Um, here you can see that I've got two different size holes and I could make a list just like I did before. Um, the fixture position. This is where the fixture is going to be located. The, the uh, post is going to start the center. So I'm going to start it at 0 and 0 and I'm going to have my ending position at 0 and 0 also. So it's going to start there after it finishes the posts it'll come back to that same position. Machine homes that means that, that the machine homes down here in this corner bottom of post and I'm going to invert it. Now that means that I'm going to invert the post. The top of the post when it comes up in the controller will be down here. The bottom will be up here. The spindle operation command since I've only got a Z, one vertical axis, one head, I'll start mine with an M3. If I, I can have up to four heads here and if I had four heads I'd probably want to do an M3.1, M3.2, M3.3, and M3.4, but since I don't, I'm just going to use an M3. Okay, vertical axis information, my cutting depth. When I first wrote this, I wrote it with a fixed depth. In other words, whatever you put it here, that's how deep the tool would plunge, and then it would cut there. I found out that uh, tools didn't last too long because it always cut in exactly the same place. So what I wound up doing was creating a variable depth and it's got a minimum that will punch in at a half inch and for this one a maximum of one inch. So I've got a half inch to play with there. So if I do four holes it will divide that half inch up into four pieces and, and uh, it will move from one hole to the next, it'll move down a little as it goes back and that makes my tool last longer. As I said I have one vertical head and the axis character I'm going to use is Z. Could be W, could be U, whatever I had for a vertical axis character. My lead in radius, I'm going to use a .125 because that's the radius of the tool. I don't need an exit radius uh, so I'll just leave it at zero and my clearance that's the distance above the material that I'm going to be as I'm wrapping around on the table. My post alignment I can either line up on the left edge in other words if the post were over here against the side or I can do center if my post was in the center and if I had a jaw that was coming in on each side to clamp it you know that one works pretty well too or I could also do a right edge and put it over against the right edge, put a fixture against the right edge of my uh, post material. I'm going to choose the left edge. Uh, my table size, now this is only for the viewer, this is only for here, so it doesn't really matter because it's not the same one that's going to be here on the WinCNC screen. But I've got it set with my low X at 0, my low Y at 0, my high X at 84, that means it's going to be 84 inches wide, and my high Y at 120. In other words, it's going to be 120 inches long. I also put a 1 inch border around the edge so that it would uh, show the entire thing all the time. Also put a auto zoom in, so if I have fewer holes it's going to zoom in to show us that. Well, actually, if I have a smaller material, it'll zoom in on the material. It won't zoom in on fewer holes. I've already explained this. This is action on run. Uh, when I click run, when I've got a post or a rail uh, laid out and I click run, I can make it either minimize when I click run or make the program close. I'm just going to make it minimize. 
Um, so the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to go over to Post and choose a material. Going to just choose this hole. Doesn't really matter which one I'm going to do. I will set my distance at two, my spacing at two, and I'll tell it that I want 16 holes. Don't know if they'll fit, but I'm going to look and see. And there you see. If you counted those, there would be 16 of them. Looks like I could probably have a at least that, a spacing of three inches. Oh, I could go four or five probably. Let's try five. And I'm off. So I'd want to come back to... 15 and there I've got 15 on um, if I wanted to I can go 12 and I could also put a spacing of 7 inches or so here and move it down I could still do more 14 and move it down and there I've got it pretty much centered okay I'm going to move that back to two inches just so you can see when I output it that this part will be pointed down on the WinCNC screen here. Um, I think the next thing I want to do is come over to the WinCNC screen and make sure that I have my auto run checked and I do. I'll pull this back up and I'll click run. Oh it says that the path is incorrect so let me see. Oh, I see what it is. I don't have the right thing here, so I need to change this to and the way the way that I knew that is is right here. This is the folder that I'm running out of. So I'll come back over to my post and it's still there. And as I said, this is the top of the post, but it should be down here because I've got it inverted. So now I'll click run. And it's ready to run. So I'll just click the eyeball here and we'll view that post. And you can see that it's down here. And if we zoomed in on this, it would be just a hair under two inches. This this is the center of the tool so this should be two and one-fourth inches up. Uh, this hole would actually be at two, the edge of the hole would be at two inches. You can see that radius that I was talking about so it's going to come in there come around and go around and cut. Um, zoom back out. Come back over to here uh, to show you how easy it would be to change that. I'm going to give it a an, a spacing of two inches and 15 holes and I'm going to run it again and you'll see how quickly that changes. Click run and view and now if we counted them there'd be 15 holes and you notice they're a lot closer to each other. I could also do an offset and you can see that they offset they alternate and that's because I have to this checked okay I click run and click the eyeball again and you can see that they are offset uh, if I wanted to do two posts with that one head I could actually come over to the configuration screen and tell it that I wanted to loop two times and then I would have to tell it how far away my second fixture was from the first from zero and I would say uh, let's say eight inches so now I'll come back over to the post and I'll run it again and we should get two of them now when I click the eyeball and you can see it did exactly what I wanted it to do and that's how easy it is to do uh, I'll go over to rail and I'll choose a different post this time. I'm going to choose this one for a hole and I'm going to tell it I want it a distance from top of, of say four inches and a spacing of two inches 
and it automatically calculates the number of holes that I need. Now this distance and this distance are not exactly the same but I can equalize them if I want to by clicking this button. Um, I can run this and since I have two selected back here on the configuration tab as, as how many times a loop it will make two posts. If I come back over and set that back to one it would make one post. But I'll show you that it'll make two and I'll run and click the eye and there are my two rails. That's how quickly it works. Um, what else can I do here? Um, I can use the Oh no, I, I'll um, set this at 0.2 inches, 2.5 two say, and I'm going to erase this number, delete this number, and click out of it again, and it calculates it again. Now you notice it's a lot closer to this end than it is to that end, so I tell it to even it out. Um, you can see that the holes are right tight up against each other. They're actually a quarter of an inch apart. And if I click run and click the eyeball and we zoom in on one of them, you can see that they are definitely that distance apart. Um, they would actually be a half inch apart here. These are one inch lines apart this line and this line will be a half inch apart because this is a quarter inch end mill that means that it's an eighth inch away from the actual cut this would be an eighth inch away so that would be a quarter and that would leave a quarter of an inch in between the the holes manual oh and by the way I can clear that if I want to manual I can um, choose the this I can I've only got a couple of holes here but I'll I'll start out with this one I'll tell it I want a spacing of two inches away for my first hole and there's my first hole and I'll just make four or five of these and now I can space this one at four inches if I want and now I will this hole there and I'll make this back to two and I'll add and let's say I wanted to make another one two inches away but I want to offset it by one inch so I can click add and you notice that it goes over there I can put a negative offset in the same thing and it comes over here uh, if I had several different kinds of holes I could do that uh, but you can see that this is a manual configuration. If you wanted to come back up here to this one and change the spacing to, in other words, the distance from the top to 20 and hit change, you can see that the whole group shifts down. I click run with this one, comes over, and you'll notice that the um, shifted ones are at the top on this and if we looked here you can see that they're at the bottom and that's basically how a uh, wind fence works I do want to check one thing here however I want to come in and see if I have Yeah, I can I can drill a hole here, and and uh, I want to show you something else here. I want to make a 0.25 by 0.25, and I'll leave the radius at an eighth of an inch. Um, and here I'm going to say. what was that name it is drill point two five dot tap and I'll come back here and I'll say
and I click sub program because this is actually a tap file so what it's going to do when I use this it's going to go in and run this particular file right here every time it wants to drill this hole in other words I'm using this quarter inch end mill here to drill a quarter inch hole I'm not going to go out and cut a big hole out or anything like that it's just going to go down and drill a hole and then lift up and move on so I'll click save and now I'll come back over to my post let's just do the post and I'll clear that I'll choose the 110 and I'll click drill dot tap and I'm gonna start here and my spacing will be 2 and there'll be uh, 16 of these and I'm gonna use offsetting so that we can see them and I'll do one inch no, not 10 inch one inch alternate offsetting and now you can see that uh, they are definitely offset from each other if I choose to run when it goes over to the WinCNC screen when it goes over to the WinCNC screen over here um, and let me zoom back out to full screen when it comes over here it's not going to show these blue lines going around all you're basically going to see is these dotted lines because it's just going to go down and punch a hole and come back out the dotted lines are the rapids in other words they're moving above the material so when I click run everything goes away I click the eyeball and here's what I was talking about all you see is the dotted line it starts up here and by the way I'll show you something else here it starts here it moves up here and starts drilling it drills here 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 it drills all the way to the bottom then it moves over here and it moves up this side drilling the holes when it finishes then it moves back down here to the end and stops that's how I've got it set up here to to do that it starts at the bottom and it goes to the top and cuts down and then moves over and moves back up the other side at eight inches and creates a second post and that's what I wanted to show you about wind fence it's really an easy program to use those sub programs you can make about any kind of a hole you wanted to and be able to run it it really makes this uh, f vinyl fence generating program nice rectangles without them just about any shape if you use the sub programs thanks for watching have a good day